really want to make sure you guys understand your homework quiz. So on your homework quiz, ladies and gentlemen, remember, when we're solving linear inequalities, we want to make sure that we solve this for y equals mx plus b. Okay? There is a way to solve. Um, we could solve this by using this, uh, the x and y intercepts. But for this problem, I want to show you how to solve it using y equals mx plus b. So what I'm going to do is I just need to get it in y form. So to do that, I need to get rid of this negative x. So I need to solve for my y. So what I need to do is undo what's happening to the y. So to do that, I look at it, Josh, and I say, what is happening to my y? I say, well, my y is being subtracted by x. So to undo subtraction of x, you add the x to both sides. Therefore, now that's going to go to 0. So I'm just left with y is greater than or equal to x plus 1. All right. The reason why I wrote the x in front of the 1 because I want it in this format, or mx plus b. Then we look at it and then we say, well, crap, now we don't have an m, right? There's no number in front of x. Well, remember, guys, if we don't, if we don't write a number in front of x, we can always write in the number 1. Because 1 times 2 equals 2. 1 times x equals x. So therefore, I can write y is greater than or equal to 1 times x plus 1. So now it's in mx plus b form. And what I can do is just draw an x and y intercept. And remember, this first point is your y intercept. It's where the graph crosses your y axis. So you can say that the graph crosses at 1. So you go up to 1 and make a dot. Right? Then the next thing is you need to determine the slope. Remember, slope is your rise over run or your change in y over your change in x. So to determine if this is not in a ratio, right? So what I can always do when I have a whole number is put it over 1. So now I have 1 over 1, meaning to find my next point on my line, the change in the y coordinates are positive 1. So does that mean I'm going to go up or down? Well, since it's positive, I'm going to go up 1. Then the change in my x is a positive 1, so I'm going to go to the right one. Okay. Notice you could also go down and to the left. Because a negative divided by a negative, if I went down, that'd be a negative 1, right? And if I went to the left, that'd be a negative 1, Walter. So a negative 1 divided by negative 1 is still going to give you a positive 1. Then, next thing I need to do is I need to determine, is it going to be a dashed or a solid line? Well, since it's equal to, it's going to be a solid line, meaning the line is going to be a part of the solution. So I'll just draw my line there. Lastly, I need to determine, am I going to shade? So are all the points above true or all the points below true? And to determine which, which is true or not, you just need to find one point that's true, and then the rest of those points on that part of the line will be true or in relation. So we always like to pick test 0, 0, because it's our easiest point for us to calculate. Now, the only time you don't want to use 0, 0, remember, is when the line goes through 0, 0. So I plug in 0 into my function for y and x. And I get 0 is greater than or equal to 1. So is that true or false? Oh, false. So I'm going to put a nice big f there. Yes. The reason why I want to put a nice big f there, so it reminds me that all points on this graph that are below the line are false. Therefore, all the points that are above the line are true. So we shade them. And the only reason why we shade them, guys, is because this point's true, this point's true, there's infinite many points that are true, okay? So instead of making all these little dots saying here's all the true points, we just write a shading and we shade in everything, okay? So that's how you graphed your homework.